Hello folks. So now that I've got this level loaded in, I can finally start looking at the collision. Now previously I just had this horizontal line that kind of acted as my floor. Well, I can get rid of that now because I have an actual world map. So I had already kind of worked on the collision to start with because of that ground. So if I come back down here, this is my player class and this is the move method. And remember I defined a floor at 300 pixels down. So I kind of already have some basic collision. And the collision that I'm going to add in with the world is not really much more complicated than this. It just has a couple more steps because there's a whole bunch of tiles that I need to look for collision against. So in this section where I'm checking for that collision with floor, this is where I'm going to add in my new collision. I'll just check this, change this to check for collision. And I will split the collision up into segments. So I will look for collision in the X direction, so moving left and right and I will look for collision in the white direction up and down separately. But before I even do any of that, I need to go through each of the tiles within this obstacle list. Remember when I created my uh, world class down here, I loaded in all of the information for the tile map, so all of the ones and minus ones and so on, and then I extracted only the, the ones that will act as an obstacle to the player. So not the decorative tiles, not the water tiles and so on, only the dirt blocks basically and I stored them within this obstacle list. So now I just need to iterate through that obstacle list and then check for each of those tiles for collision against the player. So let's come back up to the move method. So just in here where I was adding in that collision. So first of all let's iterate through them all. Uh, so we say for tile in world dot obstacle list and now begin first of all check collision in the x direction. Now remember when I move the player moving left and right I don't immediately move the rectangle instead I have this variable called dx and I have a dy for up and down movement so these are my delta variables meaning that these are the proposed change in position so this is what I would like to move the player by but I don't move him until the very end of that loop once I've done all the other checks. So the intention for doing that can try and describe with this uh, very professional looking sketch. So red is the player and black is any of the given tiles. So the idea here is to look for collision before it has occurred. So my delta x variables are saying that I would like to move the player over to the right hand side by five pixels. So this green outline is the player shifted over by five pixels. But note he hasn't actually moved yet. So the player at that point is still in the same position, but there's almost like a, an idea of where he would be if I moved him. So what I can do then is check for collision at the new position. So I can create a new rectangle at this new green position, check it for collision with a tile, and if it's occurred, well then I know that the player can't move that entire distance because then he will intersect with the tile. If I didn't do it this way, if I just moved first and then checked for collision, well then it would be too late because the player would be this green box. He would already intersect with the tile, then I would detect collision, but so what? At that point, it's already too late. So that's why I'm using dx and dy as these uh, delta variables. So that means that to check for collision, I need to go through each of these tiles. I remember these tiles were tuples, the tuples that stored an image at index zero and a rectangle at, image, at index one. So I need the rectangle, which means I need to access index one. And then I call the collide rect function. So this function is just going to take another rectangle and it's going to check for collision against the tile. The other rectangle that I want is just my player's rectangle offset by a dx value. So I take the player's current x position, which is the rector x, and then I add on the dx. So this is going to check for a new rectangle which is in this new position. The rest of the variables will stay the same. So I still want the player to be at his normal y position, and then I need a width, so self.width and self.height. So basically nothing changes, it's just I have a offset of dx on this rectangle. So if I do detect a, a collision at that new point, well then I don't want the player to move. So that delta x that I had, that I proposed to move by five pixels, well, we can just forget about it because he's going to clash if he moves. So just set that to zero. And that's it. That's X collision done. So now the player will detect collision 
when he's moving left and right, and that will stop him moving through blocks. Now with that done, I just need to do the exact same thing for Y collision. So let's see, check for collision in the Y direction. And the logic here is exactly the same. And in fact, I can just copy that line down. But instead, this time, instead of my DX, it's my Y coordinate that I'm altering by DY. So exactly the same logic, but just looking up and down instead of left and right. But the slight difference here is that in the Y direction, you could either be falling down onto a block or jumping up and hitting your head off a block. So I actually need to be able to differentiate between the two. So within this if statement, I will first of all check if I'm below the ground. Check if below the ground, i.e. jumping. Well, that's an easy check. If I'm jumping, then remember, every time I jump, my y velocity becomes positive because it moves me. Uh, no, that's not right. Every time I jump, my y velocity becomes negative because negative is in the up direction. So to tell whether I'm jumping or not, I can just check what that y velocity is. So if self.vel underscore y is less than zero, that means that the player is moving up the way. The only way he can be doing that is if he has jumped, and if he's detected a collision while moving up the way, that means that he's hit his head off something. Right? He can't land on something when he's moving up. So if that's the case, well, first of all, stop moving up the way. So change his y velocity to zero, and then change the delta y variable from that maximum value of whatever it was when he was jumping or when he was falling to just whatever the gap is between the two blocks. So I look at the gap between the player's head and the tiles, uh, the bottom of the tile. So tile uh, one, which is the rectangle, we say the bottom of that tile, so the bottom of the ground that he's just hit his head on, minus self.rec.top. That's the maximum distance that he's now allowed to move. He can't move the entire distance because he will go through it, but this is how far he can move just enough to bump his head, and then start falling back down. So that handles collision jumping. Now add a comment to say, check if above the ground, i.e. falling. Uh, well, this is the exact opposite of that. So for me to be falling, my y velocity needs to be, uh, well, I'm gonna say greater than or equal to zero, right? Because there is going to be a situation where I'm exactly at zero, but I'm gonna count that as falling. So in this situation, again, He's fallen down onto the ground, so he can't really have a y velocity anymore. So let's change that to fix to zero. And then we do the exact same thing with the dy position, except now he's landed on top of a tile. So the dy is the top of the tile that he just landed on, minus his feet. So the bottom of his rectangle. Uh, but remember, when I was checking for collision with the ground here to make sure he doesn't fall through the floor, there was this other variable which I was using. So I still need this within here. This variable basically just made sure that I was able to jump. So this self dot in air is always true when I jump, but as soon as I've hit the ground and I've fallen down onto the ground, this in air variable becomes false, meaning that he's no longer in air, so he can jump again. So make sure we delete this line or this section of code previously about the temporary floor. And now, I believe that should be everything. Let me run this code. The player, oh, no, it's not everything. I've done something wrong. Uh, what have I done here? With, oh, I thought I defined this already, but I guess I haven't. So let's go back up to the constructor, into the init method, because I should have defined it once I've created my images. So here, at the bottom of this animation loading section, I have my image, my rectangle, and yeah, right enough, this is where I should have added that. So I just forgot to add my self.width, which is going to be self.image.get underscore width. And then for height, well, it's basically the exact same thing. I just replace width with height. Okay, so now if I run this, hopefully that works. Nope, still doesn't work because I made a typo. Try that again. Yeah, third time lucky. And there you go, straight away. Uh, although he would have spawned up there, or no, actually, he would have spawned down here. Uh, the player now has this gravity. He's able to walk on the ground. I should have collision in the X direction. Yep. And this way as well. So now everything seems to be working fine. I can jump around, jump onto all these blocks. And you notice I've got this X collision as well. So he, when he comes in contact with something, he can kind of slide along it. So he doesn't just get stuck. And he's able to bump his head against things as well. 
Oh, that didn't work. Uh, okay, so I've done something wrong with the Y collision. Let's go back down there. And it's within the move method. So something in a Y collision. What have I done wrong here? Uh, actually, that was quite a silly mistake. So this should not be two separate if, if statements because the collision in the Y direction should only be detecting in either jumping or falling. So the second one should be an LF. So let's try that again and that should fix that problem. Yeah, there you go. So now he just basically bumps his head and falls back down. All right, so that's working pretty well. And you can see as soon as I jumped onto this ledge, that enemy saw me and started shooting at me. Okay, so that's player collision done. And that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, but now notice I can shoot through walls because I haven't added in any collision for the bullets. So in the exact same way, I can come down to my bullet class and add in some collision there. So within here, I've got my update method. Uh, remember, I was already checking for collision with characters to make sure that if it collides with them, then the characters take damage and die. So adding in additional collision with a level is pretty straightforward. It's just done in the same way. So we say here, check for collision with level. And again, I have to iterate through the tiles in the obstacle list. So world.obstacle list. And we just say if there's any collision. So it doesn't matter if it's an X or Y direction. I just need to check for any collision. So tile index one, remember, is the rectangle object. And we check for a collide rect. And then the rectangle that we're looking for is the bullet. So self.rect. So here I don't need to bother with dx and dy because I don't need to stop the bullet. As soon as it has detected a collision, the bullet just gets destroyed. So it's self.kill. So we don't need to preempt that collision. Now if I shoot through this, you see as soon as it hits the wall, it disappears. So that bullet just shoots into the wall and goes. So that's one of them done. But notice I can still lob grenades. Uh, in fact, I haven't even fixed the floor. So as soon as I chuck a grenade, it just pops up over there. So that's not great. Let's get rid of that. Come down here. Uh, yeah, because of the way I cut... I've coded this in and actually this is pretty good because this is kind of the foundation of what I wanted to do it's just I need to tweak it a little bit so rather than the floor it's colliding with the level so again start off by uh, add a comment check for collision with level and then start off by iterating through the tiles so for tile in world dot obstacle list uh, we're going to be checking for collision now this time I do need to check for collision in the X and the Y direction. So this is more similar to the player because the grenade has to bounce off. So first of all, let's do the X direction. So we'll copy this code up there because this was the one checking for collision against walls. Uh, make sure the indentation here is all correct. Uh, and the code is going to be pretty much the same as for what I did with the player. I'd say tile index one, which is the the rectangle of the tile, dot collide rect. And then the rectangle here is going to be done in the same way. I've got my dx and dy variables, so I need to offset the grenade's rectangle. So rect.x plus dx, self.rect.y, and then self.width. I need to make sure I actually define them this time, self.height. So let's just double check I've done that, and no, I haven't. So let's take these just after the rectangle. Let's say self.width equals self.image.getWidth and copy that down and change it to height. Okay, so now that that is done, the grenades will hit one of the corners or one of the objects and just as before, they will bounce off in the opposite direction. Now for the Y collision, I can get rid of this section because I don't have that floor anymore. And to save a bit of time, I can actually go up to the player collision because this is pretty much the same. I'll just copy it down and just tweak it a little bit. So we'll go into the move method and just copy all of this and bring it down into the grenade. Okay, so just make sure the indentation is right. So if the grenade is landed, check for collision in the Y direction. So this part stays the same. So this is basically saying that we're checking against the tile, but now it's the grenade offset in the Y direction. So if there is a collision, well, slight difference from the player. The player is controlled by your keyboard inputs. 
the grenade has its own dx variable here. So this dx is just dependent on the direction it's been thrown in as well as its speed. So when it does hit something vertically, I want it to instantly stop and bounce down the way. So I'm going to have to say here that it slows down to a stop. So self.speed equals zero. So when it hits, say, the ceiling, I want it to stop moving left and right. I just want it to hit the ceiling and then just drop back down to the ground. But in the next level, it's going to be the same. So I say check if below the ground, i.e. Uh, it's not jumping, so it's, it's thrown up the way. Uh, then it's looking for self uh, y velocity being negative, meaning that it's moving upwards. So this section stays the same. It bounces off the bottom of the tile that it's just hit. And then we check for y collision in the opposite direction. So now if it's above the ground and it's falling, then its y velocity must be greater than zero. So this stays the same. Uh, it doesn't have an in-air variable. That's just for the player. We get rid of that, and then it lands on top of the object or on top of the tile. So let's clean this up a little bit and run this code again. So now if I throw a grenade, and there you go, works straight away. So if I throw it against this wall, it should bounce off and bounce backwards. So every time it bounces off any of the walls, the direction simply flips. So if it's moving this way, it moves at the same speed, but just in the opposite direction. But it continues to fall down the way. Now, if I hit it off the wall, let's see if I can aim this right. Uh, at the bottom of this uh, platform, you can see it stops moving. So as soon as it hits that, the speed, oh, I've run out of grenades, the speed becomes zero. Now I could get rid of that and just experiment with it, and see what happens if I don't have that. So let's throw it off the bottom of that again. And you can see it kind of just keeps going. However, the problem here is it never stops. So it's just going to keep sliding. You see, it just keeps sliding back and forth until it blows up. So that's not really what I'm after. And uh, because of that, we're going to put that back in. And that's pretty much it. That's Collusion working within the game. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward to add in. Uh, what I still need to add is Collusion with the water as well as the exit, but I can't do that right now because I can't actually get over there. I don't have a, I don't have the scroll set up yet. So I'm going to add that in a bit later on. Uh, I need to get rid of this red line though. So let's find where I did that. Uh, it's probably within the game loop somewhere. Or I wonder, actually, no, it will be within the draw background function. So let's come up here. Yeah, at the moment, this just this should just have screen fill. So I'll get rid of this pygame.draw.line. That was just temporary as a, as a little floor while I was building this. Yeah, so that's gone now. So, yeah, that's it for, for this video. Uh, I'm going to add in a collision with the rest of the objects and I'll add in scrolling in the background uh, in future videos. So for now, if you found this useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.